Huh? Oh, no. We're going to get to right over. The 70-year-old guy doesn't. It? They think I'm, I'm already half gone, so they ain't going to take care of me. So. Oh, you take care of the young dude. He's got a long life yet, so. Golly. I don't know. I don't know why. How we doing? Pretty good, son. Pretty good. Man. About those Braves, huh? It's fun, man. It's fun watching them. Yeah. Congratulations to them. Uh, Coach Rob, just um, uh, defensively, uh, um, how do y'all treat the missed tackles here? Well, the biggest thing is just we got to come under control. You can practice a drill. You can do a drill all you want to. Drills are always going to look good. Guy's always going to make tackle. Guy's always going to have his head on the right side. The best thing to do is do it in practice. And not necessarily take the guy to the ground, but the best thing is when it's going live in practice and it's going full speed and it's not a drill that's all set up for you to look good, that's when you got to really practice being a good tackler in space. And, you know, that's, there's no secret to it. I mean, it's every team, it's exactly the same thing. You, you got to practice it when you're actually doing practice, not a drill. Mm -hmm. There isn't any drill that's going to simulate a game in tackling. There just isn't. So we just got to do it in practice. We got to do a better job of forming up, not obviously taking our guys down or hitting them and all that stuff, but you can still form up, come under control, do all that kind of stuff that you're coached to do in tackling. That's how you got to do it. And I spoke to a lot of, uh, I got my number. What, so what's what is the question part of that? Uh, can your pressure be increased? Sure Why? Uh, to maybe help the secondary out and coach. You think that helps the secondary put in pressure? Oh yeah, I got your interception last week. Where'd you coach secondary? Um, um, huh? Smyrna, Smyrna, Florida. Coach of the year, two thousand. Oh, that's that's great. So when you zone pressure, how many zones are there underneath open? It depends. Yeah, it depends on what. On uh, which ones you uh, call them. So all I know is when you zone pressure, there's more zones open than when you don't pressure. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, and if you're in man coverage and you're not playing man very good and you pressure, is there more pressure now on the secondary if you don't get there than if there's not? That's correct. Okay, you answered my question. So, so, wait, so let's just start summing up. That's a yes. So we tried pressuring against Philly. Right. How'd that work? How'd that look? How'd it look? It didn't look, look, it didn't look, uh, didn't look too good. Okay, so I told you a couple weeks ago we had to back off some of the stuff that we had to do right. because we weren't getting there, we weren't running things quite correctly. So we had to clean some stuff up and make it simpler. Okay, so that's what we've done. Okay, so you guys get all into this pressures and sacks and all this stuff. Been doing this forever. And it's not based on, first of all, if you run a pressure, you better get there. That's the number one thing about pressure. It's not about the secondary, it's about the pressure. If you aren't getting there, you're now hanging the secondary out to dry more than you did if you didn't pressure, right? Is that right or is that wrong? That's correct. That is correct. So if we're not getting there in pressures, which we weren't, then why would I want to hang the secondary out to dry when I get a different secondary in there almost every down? Has that been the case in the secondary? Have we had different rotating parts in the secondary these last three weeks? Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Have we won two out of the last three weeks? Yes. yes. Okay. You answered my question. You're welcome. I'll ask you a more general question. Okay. You have won two out of the last three weeks. So if you look at that, and especially trending up all into the second third of the, the uh, season, what would you say, Coach, is the maybe one or two things that you've seen specifically that the defense has contributed to those things? Well, first of all, we, we got a couple of uh, interceptions that really helped. You know, over in London, Hawk got one. We got one right before the half. We had a big one in that sudden change with Foyer getting that all the way back down, setting up a score. Where we need to improve, I'll probably tell you this way, what I think what, where we're not doing well is a couple things is we got to play better man coverage, okay? Because when we call man, that's when we seem to be getting hurt, okay? And part of that is because we have different defensive backs in there all the time, okay? And sometimes 
as a play caller, I also don't want to put a guy in harm's way. If the guy's just coming in, the guy was on the practice squad the day before, I'm not going to go in and call all these things that we practiced all week that he didn't get to practice. That's not fair to him. Then when he busts and everybody yells at him and says hey, he was the fault, that's not fair to the guy. So sometimes when that stuff happens, I have to change the game plan and maybe call things a little differently to make sure that I'm not putting that guy in harm's way. But number one, we got to play better man coverage. Number two, we got to play better on third down. Okay, third down leads to red zones. Last week in the very first drive, we had four third downs that we had a chance to get off the, drive, off the field on the very first drive, right, that they went down and scored on. And I know we got to play better in the red zone too, but that's part of man coverage too. Most teams play man coverage down in the red zone. So we got to play better man, got to play better in the red zone, but the biggest thing right now is getting off the field on third down. I mean, we did four, when you get a guy, you know, somebody four times in a drive on third down, you need to get off the field on one of those, and we didn't. And so that, that drive was probably the worst drive of the game. So I know we missed a tackle at the end of the game that led to a score. There was a sudden change. We didn't get him, get him stopped on that one. But I'm just saying we made a couple of nice big plays. That's been contributed. We had the interception the week before and gave the offense the ball in plus territory at, over in London, right? And then the other thing is, like, in the two-minute drive at the end in London, like I say, I looked out there and we got a practice squad guy the day before was out there at corner. We got a safety who's a backup. We got a new nickel in because the other, nick, the other two nickels got hurt. And so all of a sudden, um, Richie had to go in and play nickel, which he hadn't practiced hardly all week. So all we were trying to do there was milk the clock. Whether or not they caught, kicked a field goal at the end was absolutely irrelevant to me. We got to take this clock off the board. So I was not going to pressure and put those guys in a harm's way where they could give up a big play. Nor was I going to put them in man coverage where if a guy slips and falls and they score on an easy, fast touchdown, that wasn't going to happen either. It was nothing about stats. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes stats are misleading because you don't know how the game's going. In that situation, I was not going to blitz. I was not going to pressure. I was not going to play man. Milk the clock. And so, yeah, so we didn't get many sacks. We didn't get, I think we ended up doing getting one sack maybe in that thing later on in a zone. But that's kind of, there's a lot of things that, there's so many things that go in. Some, sometime when I do retire, I really would like to have a media day and just kind of explain why coaches a lot of times don't answer questions or are kind of so evasive that I know you don't like that and I don't really like to be like that, but there's so many other intangibles that go into coaching. For example, if you put a guy in there and he really doesn't know the pressure or he's something or he's a new guy, or let's say he's just struggling, but you keep doing it, pretty soon he loses credibility with the other 10 guys on the field. Okay, we, th we have to think about that as coaches. I've seen players destroyed, basically quarterbacks, but even defensive backs destroyed because they lose confidence. And if you put them in those situations where they lose confidence, then it also destroys them for their future. Because what happens is then the other 10 guys, you know, I heard somebody say something the other day, why isn't this guy playing more? And, and the guy even said, why don't you take your, your lumps and just play those guys? Well, if I'm Greedy Jarrett and Deion Jones, I, I don't want to take lumps. I want to win. I'm still, this three and three. We aren't oh and six. So we're going to take lumps now. We're trying to win games and get to the playoffs. That's what we're trying to do. But I also don't want to put somebody in a situation, if they're making continued mistakes, that everybody looks at that guy and says, we can't count on that guy. And then all of a sudden, that guy loses trust. And then he loses camaraderie with his teammates. I've seen players destroyed for those situations. And I'm not going to ever do that as a coach. So sometimes what you guys see may not be what exactly you want to see or the public wants to see or whatever, but it is what we need to see for in, a, in a lot of different ways. And it's not always based on whether they can handle pressure, whether it's, it's can we do what we're going to ask them to do and can we do it in a fashion that we're not going to make mistakes. That Philly game, I keep going back to it because I'm, I'm upset with myself over it a little bit because we did too much and we made a bunch of mistakes. And, they, and it looked like it. It did. And so we aren't making those same mistakes. Are they getting some plays? Yeah, we missed some tackles. And we got to play better man. We got to play better third down. But guys also, we didn't come out of the game going, oh, we had 15 mental mistakes. We didn't in the last couple games. We've had very few mental mistakes. We've had other mistakes, just technique things, but not. you can't have mental mistakes. You're never going to win. You're going to give up big plays. Well, I'm not rushing you into retirement, by the way, but personally, you're not going to do that. 
<laughs> but I think there's a lot of things that it would behoove you to know because before you ask the question, because you, you're kind of going to know that you're not going to get an answer. Because if it's going to be something that's going to put a player, I don't want to say something about a player. If you ask me about a player, why isn't he playing? You think I'm ever going to tell you because he's not playing very well? Well, why would the, how would that player feel if I stood up here and said that? I, I would never want to lose credibility. So I'm saying to ask some questions, things like that, you're never going to get. You're going to go, hey, we got to. You know what you're going to get? The standard. Oh, we got to keep coaching hard, better and playing better. That, that's the standard that you're going to get, right? You hear all the time. What else do you want us to say? You, that's what we are going to say. So, I know I get winded up here, but I, I mean, I do like media. I do, and. And the radio show that I talked about, I still listen to it every day going morning. <laughs> I do. I like them. I do. I, I like both those guys. But I'm just saying that, uh, you know, I'm going to also speak my mind. Because I'm just at that point in my life where I'm going to speak my mind. When you bring David Prisco to help the pro life player, I hope so. What, when he does come back, whether it's this week or next, how does that change maybe what you do? It depends on how he practices during the week, Mike. It's kind of like all these guys. We got we got some guys now. We got some young rookies that are starting to play a little bit, and we're getting some even like Hawk, who's not a rookie but a, a young guy. We're getting guys that are playing and feeling a little more confident. And the more they feel confident, the more I'll do. Okay, like I said, I started out too much, and I've backed off. And now I told you I last week. I'm kind of adding a little bit more back in as guys feel comfortable doing that. The other thing is then you're going to give guys opportunities different places to play and just rotate guys in. So it's not going to be the same secondary every day gone down. I mean, guys have proved they can go in and can play. And especially young guys, when they do it right, they've done it very right. But when they've done it wrong, they've done it very wrong. And so we just always got to be careful as a staff, put them in the position so they can do it right. Yeah, it was, a, it was Isaiah's job yeah. to lose, and he wasn't going to lose it. So, you know, and that's the way I've really been that way with most guys that I've had. It was Logan Ryan at Tennessee. It was, you know, guys at, at Baltimore. But that's not the case now. Yeah. So it could be a revolving door there. It could be a revolving door at safety. It could be a revolving door at a little bit of corner because they've all kind of proven they all got strengths. They all got weaknesses. So, you know, we'll use them all. I don't know, because I, I don't know anything medical about that, and I don't even know if this last one was. I don't. I, I don't know. Look, that stuff is so far removed from me. I don't. I have, I have no idea. It all has to do with the doctors, the medical staff, and and Arthur. Well, there's a lot. He's a good example. Sometimes, like if, if you're a corner, and they never throw over to your side, how are you going to show up in the stat book? Right. <laughs> so, and you know, it, it's and it's the same thing. Like I don't even know. I, I mean, I do not have any idea what I, the only numbers I know is what you just told me because I don't pay any attention to it. But one of the guys that I'm just telling you affects everything is 97. Mm -hmm. But he may not show up in the stats a lot. But that interception the other day was 97. He hit the quarterback and forced it, and we actually were, he, we played him outside a little bit last week. I don't know if anybody noticed, but he actually were moving moving him around a little bit. But the truth of it is, he caused that interception, but it doesn't show that in the stats. It shows Foye, you know, got the interception. So there, there's a lot of things that show up for us. You know, um, I mean, it was a lot of guys had good games. A lot of guys showed up. Obviously, Dion. Had a really good game. Had NFC Player of the Week. I mean, that's a we love that. Love seeing that stuff. And uh, so. Last week, the way they played last year was fundamentally different from the way that you play defense. Can you give me a synopsis that I'll understand about how? I mean, is it just structurally different? Is the starting point different? It structurally is always kind of a vague term because guys basically, when you look out there in defense, it kind of all looks the same. The difference, like, is in the, there's two ways, you know, usually there's two different schemes on defense, like basically up front. 
there's a scheme where you, re you get guys and draft guys that are upfield guys all the time. They just, they're getting a three-point stance and they are up the field trying to hit a gap and do all that stuff. And of course, your secondary, your, the back end, your linebackers and your secondary, everything has to coordinate with that kind of a front. We're not that kind of front. They were a little bit more of that last year. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's a lot, a lot of successful teams that do it that way. It's just whatever the coordinator or whoever the head coach prefers. And that's what you, but that's what you draft to. You know, it's just like if you want to throw the ball 50 times a game, you, you, don't, you don't get a fullback and three big tight ends. You know, if you want to run the ball and play 12 personnel, you get tight ends or you get fullback or whatever, you draft to what your needs are. Okay, well, our deal was that I'm not that kind of, that's not our front. That's never been my kind of front. We were a two gap all the way at New England. We aren't two gap at Baltimore, but we are hit, lock it out, build a wall, set an edge, and we aren't up the field. And so, like I say, there's a lot of successful teams that are up the field defenses too, but it just doesn't happen to be our style. And so linebacker play is different because now gaps change. They're different, you know, and, and uh, it, it's just now they got to play. So Dion had to learn, Foyer had to learn. The coverage that you play in the back end is different because it's just, it's, it just is. So uh, like I say, I, I don't mean that in any way, any bad about the last staff. There is a lot of good staffs. I mean, they're doing pretty good at Dallas. <laughs> playing pretty good defense at Dallas. So I'm just saying that that's – it's just different that way. Is, is that how you've always – is that how you've always been defensively? Forever. Like what you do now or Forever. That, that, that that's my background from my first college job ever. I, I have – I'm – you know, I go way back where everything was an odd front, a slant and angle and all that kind of stuff. And, and it's just – that's been me for 48 years, from a high school coach on. And – adapted it and when I went to New England my first job in the NFL Bill Belichick was the same way Nick Saban was the same way everybody I've worked for every head coach I've worked for even if they were the defensive coach we put that's why they hired me because that's the kind of style of defense that we play I've only ever really worked for a couple offensive head coaches Arthur and uh, Gary Pinkle that's the only two offensive coaches I've ever worked for and it was the same there so you guys good Yes, oh, go get another one. Yeah, I was real impressed with the way that you played and you know, the interceptions and back to back games. Have you been impressed by it? Oh, I'd be impressed if we had more than two <laughs> or more than three. I guess we've had three, right, in the last games. But at least now we're starting to get our hands on the ball. I like the fact that we're doing that. Yeah, we want to stress turnovers and, you know, we play enough zone that I'd, we, we, we need more. But, I, but at least it's trending in the right direction. Yeah, uh, I've been. I don't know if the word's impressed. I've been encouraged by, by the way it's going. Um, he didn't ask you about the Panthers at all. They're coming up this week. Yeah. What are the, uh, I think that might the be. oversight uh, on our part? Um, what do you see from them? Uh, you know, they had the fast starts. The running back gets hurt. And, uh, you know, quarterback's there. And, uh, well, as a coach, you know, as a coach, you always see the things they do well. You very seldom ever see the things. You can't count on a guy throwing an inter you know, a, a bad ball. You can't, you know, you can't expect a wide receiver to drop a ball. So you see the things they do well. Like somebody was talking about Darnold, uh, you know, throwing the uh, pass out of the end zone last week and getting intentional groundings. Mm -hmm. Well, I just watched on film him throw one out of the end zone and to number 80 down the middle of the field, that was an absolute strike. That's the stuff I see. This guy is a talented, talented quarterback who can run, has a strong arm. Everybody has hot and cold. All I see is the hot. And the thing of it is, is he, he gets hot, he can really hurt you. He can move around. He's another moving quarterback that we got to face that can get out, of, get out of jams. They got two talented wide receivers. The thing is, I'm really impressed with their two tight ends. These guys can block. Because there haven't been a lot of tight ends in the league that I thought could block. These two guys can block, and they got a good running game. Yeah, I know they're missing 22, but you know they they've they've just they've made some miscues at the wrong, unopportune times, and you can't you can't count on those things. I think this it's the other thing is about I would say this. Look, if the guy wasn't a really good, talented quarterback, they wouldn't have taken him, and he wouldn't have gotten drafted. If a guy is playing in the NFL and he is a pro football player, he is a damn good football player. I don't care what position or what team. Okay. So you, would, uh, you, would, you would talk a little bit before about confidence. And, and how confident. When you see
see a quarterback that maybe is has had maybe complications in the past, like in New York, and is playing the way he's been playing the last few weeks. Are there things you can do defensively to try and kind of take him off? The well, spot you, you hope so. You, you hope so. You, you, you want to do that about any quarterback. I even want to do it against Brady. I mean, there's, you know, you just I don't care who you're playing. You're always going to set the game plan based starting with the quarterback in the passing game. First of all, you get, can we? You got to stop the run. But then, second of all, how are we going to affect the quarterback? Receivers are receivers. They're all good. They're all fast. They all got a catch radius. They got all these different types of receivers. But it's always the quarterback that's the main cog. Yeah, are there things like when you, when you know the guys maybe struggling a little bit, are there things that you kind of say in your head, oh, okay, I might want to try this early to, to you see do, if I can continue that? It's always contingent upon what you can do. It's, yeah, I may like to do this, but can our guys do that? You know, okay, it's the first thing is you can go out and say, boy, I could play man to man against these guys. Well, can my guys, are we playing man to man well enough to do it? So there's always just not one factor. It's not only the quarterback, it's all also about us. You guys good? Yeah. All right, appreciate you.